نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا Indeed all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore we should praise him and glorify him and seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help in all matters in our lives and we should seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from any evil desires within ourselves and from any evil which results from our bad deeds Verily, whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to go astray, no one can guide. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of our worship, our devotion, our servitude, our ultimate adoration and ultimate obedience, except our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Holy Quran, بَعْدَ عُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ أَلَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, in Surah Al-Nisa, the opening verse of Surah Al-Nisa. O mankind, O humanity, have taqwa of your Lord. Be mindful of the one who created you. The one who created you from a single soul and made from it its mate and spread from them from Adam and Eve, many men and women, and be mindful of Allah. The command is repeated. Be mindful of Allah, have taqwa of Allah, the one through whom you demand your rights, wal arham, and the ties of kinship, the, the wombs, the ties that are related to the womb. Now, if you know qiraat, you know there's two ways of reciting this verse. Well, arhama, if you recite it with the fatha, it means have taqwa of your Lord, be mindful of your Lord, and be mindful of the womb. Be mindful of the ties of kinship connected to the womb. Be mindful of the family ties of kinship. And in the qira of Hamza, it's well arhami with a kasra, which means what the ladhi tasa'aluna bihi. وَبِلْ أَرْحَامِ Be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through whom you demand your rights and you demand your rights through the ties of family. You demand your rights from one another by saying, you are my family member, you are so-and-so, you are related to so-and-so. Now, this verse is one of many verses in the Qur'an that establish the family ties of kinship. 
and establish the importance of family in Islam. And there are many others. For example, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Shura, قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى The Prophet Muhammad is instructed to say to the Quraysh, Say, I ask you for no recompense. I ask you for no reward. I'm not asking for anything in return for this da'wah. All I'm asking for you to do is honor the ties of kinship, to show love to your relatives. There are many verses in the Qur'an which emphasize taking care of one's relatives. وَآتِ ذَا الْقُرْبَى حَقَّهُ Give the, give the family ties their, their dues. Give your relatives their dues. And so the topic of today's khutbah is about the importance of family in Islam. We see when Ja'far ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anh, when he went to Abyssinia in that early phase in the da'wah and al Najashi asked him to summarize the message of Islam. He mentioned, after mentioning Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the theology of Islam, the Islamic beliefs, he mentioned Wasilat al-Arham, the uh, connecting the ties of kinship, upholding family relationships. That's one of the fundamental values of Islam. A healthy society is built upon healthy families. Now unfortunately we live in a modern culture in which the value of family has become eroded for a variety of reasons. Part of it is related to technology. People just spend all of their time on social media or spend all of their time consuming entertainment and they have no time for one another. The average child spends more time watching television in one week than they will spend speaking to their father in their entire lifetime according to statistics. Even married couples, they go and have dinner and they're just pulling out their phone and checking their messages. They want to spend time together, they go and they sit and watch a movie, there's no communication. People have become fragmented. And part of that is also related to the ideology of liberalism, which has as one of its components, radical individualism. It's just me, myself and I. And you see that in culture. Right? So what has happened as a result of this? We have a loneliness epidemic. The number of people who say, I feel alone, I feel worthless, I feel empty, I'm having a meaning crisis, I feel disconnected from everyone and everything. That number has skyrocketed. 22% of Americans, 23% of, uh, 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 of Brits, they report experiencing a loneliness, uh, a feeling of pervasive loneliness. So all of these things are connected. And subhanAllah, if you think about it, the sources of stability in a person's life, everybody has to have sources of stability to allow them to overcome challenges, obstacles, sources of stress. The sources of stability in a person's life are what? Faith, family, community. And over the past you know, a century in modern society, faith has been re removed from people through secularism and atheism. Family and community has been eroded from people's lives through individualism and liberalism. And so now you have destabilizing forces coming. You know, the financial stress, the uncertainty of the pandemic, all these different things that people went through, and there's nothing to give them stability, and there are all these forces and challenges that are increasing the stress in their life, and people just can't handle it. People have a complete meltdown. So this shows us the need to revisit our values and our teachings in Islam and rebuild our, number one, our Iman, number two, our families, and number three, our community. And the focus in today's khutbah is on the family. And I want to divide it into discussing the top tips for people on improving relationships with one's children with one's spouse and with one's parents. These are the relationships that are being broken in today's society, right? A lot of parents and children are no longer in contact, right? There are the people report that they rarely talk to their parents or uh, there are many people who don't even want to have children anymore or don't even want to get married. This is one of the new trends in society. So how do we build these relationships? How do we how do we establish these relationships and increase them in Islam? The first one is 
Bismillah. How do we build and establish these family relationships in Islam? The first are what are the top tips we can do today to improve our relationship with our children? From the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad from the Islamic teachings, from the Quranic teachings, what are three things we can do today to improve our relationship with our children? Number one, be involved in your children's lives. There's a beautiful hadith of the Prophet Muhammad when he went to visit the family of Anas ibn Malik Anas ibn Malik had a younger sibling and that younger sibling, his, his pet bird had passed away and the Prophet Muhammad he spoke to him and he said, to, he made conversation with him and he said Ya Aba Umair, ma fa'ad al he made this rhyme, he gave him a kunya, and he said, Oh Abu Umair, what did the little bird do? Right? He, he, he made him laugh and he made some humor in this, in this way. Now there's an uh, interesting hadith, or sorry, interesting narration where uh, the son of uh, Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, he saw Imam al-Shafi'i in the masjid all night, and he was and he was wondering, what is he doing just sitting all night in the masjid? He's not standing and praying. And he told his father. So they said, let's go ask him. In the morning, they went and they asked him. He said, all night I was sitting about this, sitting and thinking about this hadith. And I derived over 70 rulings just from this phrase. Ya Aba Umair, ma fa'ala al-nughayr. It shows you the level of Islamic scholarship. What were all these rulings you derived? The permissibility of having pets. The permissibility of using a kunya for a child. The permissibility, the importance of, uh, you know, using humor and, and speaking with children in a way that uh, connects with them. This hadith, what I want to extract from it for today is how the Prophet Muhammad SAW connected with children. How the Prophet Muhammad SAW connected with children and paid attention to what's going on in their lives. Now let me paint for you a portrait. A child comes home from school. He says, Baba, I'm so excited. Today, do you know what game we played? We did this, we did this. Dad says, leave me alone. I'm, I'm busy, that's great, whatever, brushes him off. Next week, the child comes home. Oh, I'm so excited, we were doing this, and you know what this person said to me? And oh, I, I made this cool rocket in, in school, I'm really excited about it. Okay, yeah, great, well, what are, what's your report card? How are you doing, you know? Not interested in what the child is interested in. A few years later, the parent comes, he says, my child doesn't talk to me. I don't know what's going on. What's going on is you need to have connection before correction. You need to be involved in your child's life. The companions reported about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu used to play with children. He is the head of state, he is the head of Medina. He is the Prophet, he's the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he is taking the time to play with children. The children love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at how many ahadith are narrated from companions who were children when they were with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For most amongst them is Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhuma. He was just 13 or 15 years old when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam built that love with children by being involved in their life. And that relates to the second tip. So the first tip, what you can do today to improve your, your relationship with your children, be involved in their life. Number two, show your love for them. Once the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam was seated and he, he kissed his grandchild and a man who was there, Al-Aqra bin Habis, he said, I have so many children and I, I never kissed them. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what can I do for someone whom Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala has taken mercy out of their heart? When you love someone, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you should inform them. How about your children? How often do you tell your children that you love them? How often do you kiss them, hug them, show your affection to them? Sometimes culturally, we have certain cultural ideas that don't correspond to what the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi teaches us. Cultural ideas that tell a, a parent that no, you should be very stern with your children, otherwise they're going to misbehave. No, the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is to show your affection to them. And Muawiyah bin al-Hakam al-Sunami, 
he narrated the Prophet Muhammad was the best teacher. He never scolded me. He never said, why did you do this or why didn't you do this? He never hit, he never, he never yelled. He was the best teacher. This is the example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, uswatun hasna. You have in the example of the Prophet Muhammad the best role model. And that brings me to the third tip. Be a positive role model. Whatever behavior you want to see in your children, start modeling that today. You want them to improve in their prayers, in the Quran, pray together. The family that prays together, stays together. Now, what about one's relationship with one's spouse? What about one's relationship with one's wife or with one's husband? How do we improve that relationship? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, the best of you is the one who is best to their family, their spouse. And I am the one of you who strives the best in my relationship with my spouse. Now, what are the tips we can imp- uh, apply from the Islamic teachings that will improve one's relationship with one's spouse? The first are the languages of love. This is something that, uh, you know, there was a famous book written by Dr. Gary Chapman. He talked about these five languages of love. But in fact, you can see these languages of love in the example of the Prophet Muhammad so for example, the first is words of affirmation. You tell them, I love you. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, if you love someone, you should tell them. You should express it to them. You should have kind words between one spouse. The other is quality time. We know that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi he used to spend time with his spouses like Aisha radiallahu anha. She recalls a time when they, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was with her and they went for a race together. They went racing together. Another time when the uh, Abyssinian, uh, 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 a group of Abyssinians were in the masjid, they were doing a performance and the Prophet Muhammad carried Aisha radiallahu anha on his back. The time that is spent with one's spouse is fundamental. It's one of the languages of love, quality time. Number three, receiving gifts. The Prophet Muhammad said, give gifts, it will establish love between one another. Number four, acts of service. Aisha radiallahu anha was asked, what did the Prophet Muhammad used to do when he was at home? She said, Kana fi khidmati ahliha. He was always in the service of his family. And the fifth one is the physical touch. The f- physical touch as a way of expressing affection and love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that from his signs, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ From his divine signs, أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا That he has created for, uh, for you spouses. أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So that you may have sakina, peace and tranquility between you. Many homes do not have peace and tranquility between the spouses. But what is the key to getting that peace and tranquility? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً He has made between you love and mercy. Now love we understand. Mercy a lot of people don't understand. Mercy. A lot of marital therapists, they say that what causes many marriages to fail is this lack of compassion. When people don't understand what the other person is going through, or they don't try to understand the other person's struggles, that lack of compassion causes a lot of marriages to fail. <coughs> and that brings us to the second point. So the first tip for improving your relationship with your spouse today is implementing the languages of love. The second tip is shared responsibilities. We mentioned how the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was involved in, in, in chores in his home. He was involved in different uh, duties in his home. He used to mend his own shoes. He used to take, uh, to take care of the family. Now, when it comes to responsibilities, when people, when there's an unequal division of responsibilities in the home, that leads to unmet expectations. Unmet expectations. I wanted my spouse to do this. I wanted my wife to do this. She didn't do it. And what does that lead to? That leads to resentment. And resentment over time builds. 
is cumulative. And that leads to small issues becoming bigger issues. Every time there's a small disagreement, a big fight comes because of it. You know, they say we're making a mountain out of a molehill. Why does that happen? It's because there's underlying resentment. Because of unmet expectations. Because of a lack of open communication. So you have to start by opening the communication. What, how would you like to see the division of responsibilities in the home? How can we work together to do this? You know, my wife likes to load the dishwasher, I like to unload the dishwasher. Okay, khalas, we have a division of responsibility. Looking at how we can fairly divide the tasks in the home. According to, this is according to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad in the Shama'il of uh, 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 Imam Al-Tirmidhi, it's mentioned how did the Prophet Muhammad used to divide his time? He would divide his time into thirds. One third for the community. One third for, uh, uh, for, his, uh, for his family. And one third for his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He divided this into thirds to ensure the needs of everyone was met. And the final tip for improving one's relationship with one's spouse is to avoid the four horsemen. What are the four horsemen? John Gottman, famous you know, uh, uh, author of many books on marital health, he talks about four things. If you see them in a relationship, it predicts an increased likelihood of divorce. Four things. And these are four things that Islam teaches us to avoid. What are these four things? He calls them the four horsemen. Number one, criticism. Number two, contempt. Number three, defensiveness. Number four, stonewalling. Stonewalling means I don't want to talk to you, I'm just going to ignore you. Right? These four things, when you see them in a relationship. Now, in the Quran, in Surah Al Hajarat, Allah subhanahu wa says, uh, Allah subhanahu wa says, وَلَا يَسْخَرْ قَوْمٌ مِنْ قَوْمٌ وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ one group of people, of believers should not mock another group, nor should they engage in name calling. But this happens in contempt. People make fun of one another. They do name calling. When this starts to happen, that is a very poor prognosis for a marital relationship. When people hold the other person, eye rolling, sarcasm, making fun of the other person, and calling them names, insults, very poor prognosis. You have to stop that. Follow the Quran and take that out of your relationship. Defensiveness. Somebody gives you feedback and your first instinct is to just defend yourself. No, no, no. The reason I did it is because of this. No, no, no. It's because... Hold on. If your spouse is feeling upset about something, take ownership. Take responsibility. What can I do to make them feel different? Take responsibility. Your first instinct should not be defensiveness. Now there's two things that Islam teaches us if we were to apply them in our relationships, it would solve 99% of all these issues. Number one is appreciation. The Prophet Muhammad said, Man lam yashkurin nas, lam yashkurin lam. Whoever does not thank people has not truly thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two is apologizing, saying sorry to people. One of the conditions of tawbah is if you wrong somebody, you should seek their forgiveness. These two words, thank you and I'm sorry. If people implemented this, today it would solve so many of your problems related to family stress. Just saying thank you and just saying I'm sorry. أقول قولي هذا وصفر الله لي ولكم ورسال المسلمين وصفروا إنه هو الغفر الرحيم. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. We talked about what are tips from the Islamic teachings that you can implement today to improve your relationship with your children, to improve your relationship with your spouse. We mentioned for children, be involved. Number two, show love. Number three, be a positive role model. For one's relationship with one's spouse, number one, Express love, the five languages of love. Number two, shared responsibilities. Number three, avoid the four horsemen. What about one's relationship with one's parents? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the rights of one's parents right after mentioning our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
وَاعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship your Lord, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not associate others with him and show excellence into your treatment with your parents. The relationship and importance of parents is one of the unique features of the Islamic value system that uh, distinguishes Islam and uh, allows the family system to flourish because parents pass on so much wisdom to the children and when they go on to become parents you need to maintain those relationships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in, in Surah Al-Isra وَخْفِذْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ Lower to them the wing of humility with mercy this is a beautiful example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives when a bird looks after its, its young, it brings them close to, to, to it with its wing. That is the humility. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do that with mercy, with compassion. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, may his nose be rubbed in the dust. He mentioned three times. Who? The person whose parents reach old age, but they do not enter into Jannah because of them. When your parents get older, you have a unique opportunity, a unique ticket to Jannah through your service, your khidmah to your parents. Make dua for your parents. Say, my Lord, bestow your mercy on them as they used to take care of me when I was a child. You'll only realize this when you yourself become a parent. And you see how much you do for your baby then you appreciate how much your parents did for you. The relationship with parents is such an important thing. What are the three tips we can implement? Number one, respect and love for one's parents. Birrul walidin. The word bir, it conveys the utmost level of respect and kindness. Number two, make dua for them. Make dua for your parents. Regularly, daily, make dua for your parents. And their status and importance will increase in your heart. And you will appreciate how much they did for you. And number three, check on them regularly. Check on them regularly. This kindness and care, this lowering of the wing of, of humility, it means that you visit your parents. You call them, ask them how they're doing. How, when was the last time we called our mother or father just to tell them, I love you so much, thank you for everything you've, you've done for me, and how, I want to know how you're doing. Maybe somebody's going to do that and their parent is going to say, who are you? What have you done with my child, right? But that is part of the sunnah as well, that is from the Islamic teachings. Now, when one of the things that we realize when we implement these highs, these, these, these teachings, the ties of family become strong. And in the afterlife, one of the gifts in Jannah is that we are reunited with our family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ra'id, Jannatu adin yadkhulunaha wa man salaha min abarihim wa azwajihim wa dhurriyatihim the, the gardens of Eden, the gardens of paradise that they will enter as well as the righteous from amongst their parents and their spouses and their children. And the angels are coming to greet them from every gate. Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Glad tidings to you. Peace be unto you for the patience and perseverance that you had. What a noble and blessed final abode. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst the companions of Jannah and unite us with our family in the next life. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasna wa fi akhirati hasna wa qina adhab al nar. Rabbana la tuzib qulubana ba'da idha hadaytana wa hab lana min adunka rahma inna kanta al wahab. Allahumma a'iz al islam wal muslimin. Allahumma irfa idhulma an il mazlumin fi kulli makan wa fi kulli bilad ya rabb al alameen. Ya qawi ya aziz. Ibad Allah. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة <تصفيق> 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 <تصفيق>